Hey, hey, Jane. Welcome to episode 97, I think it is, of The Glow. Coming at you a little later in the day than I have recently. The sun's a little bit lower in the sky. It's a little bit of a breeze flowing through. There's love in the air. It's so beautiful, so rich to rest in the ground of being together. And when we're present together, this is where the magic happens. This is where the miracles happen. Welcome, Mish. All right, people are catching on before I even say it. When you drop in, please let me know where you're from. Welcome, Ginger. Yeah, I gave you a little extra to start off, Jane, right now. I have a YouTube channel, everybody, with lots and lots and lots of videos on it. And there's lots and lots. Of, I love the hearts flowing. Pumping the hearts. Thank you for that. Yeah, so there's um, a lot of um, great material on YouTube um, that you can check out, including some silent present videos that Jane was requesting. Welcome, Maria. Where are you from, Maria? Welcome, Tati. And um, yeah, we just had a great uh, session in our private Facebook group, The Secret Glow, which you can find the link for right below me to join us every week, every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. This Saturday is the Intensive Masterclass, Learning to Meditate for Inner Peace. Uh, which will be also in a private Facebook group. So there's a link to join for that. That's online. So all these things are, you can tune into anywhere in the world you can be a part of. So there's no limit to like, oh, I don't live where you do anymore. All that is not an issue anymore, which is wonderful. And then next, uh, the following weekend, August 5th and 6th, lots of love tonight, feeling it is the Big Low Retreat, Awakened Embodiment in uh, outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. A beautiful group of beings coming together that have been with me for a while, and we're gonna take it to the next level. So if you want an in-person experience in the 3D, that's what's next. That's what's coming up next, August 5th and 6th. I got some good things in the works coming up after that. Not quite ready to be announced yet, but soon, soon. Oh, and you know what? Episode 100 is coming up soon. We're like three episodes away from episode 100. And we're going to do something epic for that. We're going to make it a real celebration. Reflecting gratitude and appreciation for the 100 episodes we've had together and everybody who's been a part of it and everyone who's participated. Yeah, keep the hearts rocking. Everyone that's been a part of making this happen, everyone that's tuned in, everyone that's commented, everyone that's asked questions, everyone that's shared their presence, we've all been a part of co-creating the magic and miraculousness that is here and now together. Welcome, Jenny. How's everybody doing? How's everybody being? One of the things that's been coming up in the, the personal sessions I've been doing is about intimacy, intimacy or lack thereof. What is love? What is intimacy? How do we create it? How do we discover it? How do we find it? Let me give you a couple of little tips right now and there'll be ways to delve in deeper. There's a retreat that I'm feeling coming up in September based with intimacy as the theme of it. 
Intimacy means no separation. The most true, profound intimacy with another human being, let's just start with another human being, is a place of no separation. No distance between. No barriers, no walls, no borders. This is the essence of what love truly is. How do you discover it? How do you find it? How do you manifest it? It's definitely not just sex. In fact, many people have sex without intimacy. We can all agree on that, right? So it's definitely something uh, that transcends any physical form of expression and can include any physical form of expression. You can have intimacy with a tree, but you don't need to have sex with a tree to have intimacy with it. Although I do know some people that have tried some adventurous things, but it's not necessary. It's the space of presence and consciousness that's fundamental and primary. So, sorry, I'm making myself laugh. Let me. So, what creates love? What creates intimacy? What is it that's the foundation for that? So, what's happening with people that I'm working with is You meet somebody, connect with somebody, you really like them, you think they're really great, they're really cool, they're really groovy. They're like everything that you, you know, want on your list, on your your mind's eye of what some other amazing being can be, man or woman. And what happens is, and it can start so subtle, it can start so subtle, is you really want that person to like you, right? You really want them to like you, maybe even love you. So what do you do? You kind of like don't want to show them this part of you, because if you show them this part of you, they might not like you. So let me just kind of show you this part of me instead of this part of me. Because if I show you this part of me, you might not like it. And you can feel it arising. It's like this sense of like, it's what we call vulnerability. So you, there's, this, there's, a, there's a point of vulnerability. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Well, if I give the honest answer, the true answer, the most authentic answer, if I express myself authentically, they might not like me. They might not like who I am. But I really like them and I wanna I want them to keep liking me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda give them the answer that I think they want to hear so they keep liking me. You with me so far? So now what starts to happen? You really like this person, you really love them, you want them to stay around, keep around. So you're kind of just slightly, or maybe not so slightly, presenting what you want to present, or what you think you should present, to maintain that attention. And what starts to happen, the more you go down that road, it can start very subtle. But when you're not authentic, you don't have intimacy. When you're not authentic, you don't have intimacy. The key to intimacy is authenticity. The key to intimacy is authenticity. Being wholly, fundamentally authentic, moment by moment by moment. So it's what I call a pivot point. It's what I call a pivot point. Okay, so you're in this space, it's vulnerable. 
if I answer this question, honestly, he or she might not like me anymore. They might reject me. This is what we're afraid of, rejection. We might get rejected. And this is the part where people want me to say, but if you just say it, you'll be accepted. But that would be a lie. And we're dedicated to the truth here, right? So what I want to say is, if you share the authentic truth, you might be rejected. It's very possible you could be rejected. And it's also possible you can move into a deeper space of intimacy together. But if you don't share authentically, it's not possible to move into a deeper space of intimacy together. So if you're dedicated to intimacy, that means you're dedicated to your own authenticity. That means you're dedicated to being true and authentic moment by moment by moment. First and foremost to yourself. Secondly, to the people that you're in intimate relationships with. Your partner, your family, close friends, community. Then, if you're being authentic and true and real and genuine in yourself and someone rejects that which is real and true and genuine in yourself, what does that mean about you? What does that mean about you? Does it mean you're a bad person? You're a terrible person? You should feel shame and guilt and self-judgment and self-loathing and low self-worth. Maybe it just means you just don't align together. Maybe it doesn't mean anything bad about you or them. It just means that your authentic essence and their authentic essence doesn't go the way you think it should go or they think it should go. It goes a different kind of way. And when you're in the space of authenticity, when you're living from the space of authenticity, when you're living in alignment with the truth within, there's a sense of trust. What I, what I the metaphor I use about being on the train, right? The train of authenticity. You trust that as you move along your tracks of authenticity, it's like a resonant field. It's like an attractor field. So vibrational frequency and the people that are aligned with you authentic authentically you'll be drawn together in a resonant field so when I'm expressing from the deepest authenticity of myself in each moment and you're expressing deep something of yourself in each moment what we're creating is a vibrational frequency of authentic relating authentic relating okay authentic relating not authentic relationship authentic relationship is a is a is a noun it's like a dead solid stagnant thing authentic relating is a verb it's alive it's constantly moving it's in a flow it requires presence attentiveness awareness alertness being in the moment being in the now And when we're both present and we're alert or in the moment we're in the now together, it doesn't even matter what we're talking about or what we're saying or even necessarily if we even agree or what our emotional frequency is, if we're happy or sad or angry or laughing or crying, there's a sense of intimacy. There's a sense of intimacy because we're coming from a place of authenticity. You follow what I'm saying? And this is the beauty of the retreats that we do. It's not really about trying to be blissful or trying to be happy or trying to be ecstatic or trying to be better or trying to be anything at all. It's about authenticity. It's about resting, relaxing into a space where maybe for the first time in your life, you feel like it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to be. 
exactly as you are. And when you be exactly as you are, paradoxically, that's where the healing and the transformation comes into being. That's where the magic and the miracles arise. So there's authentic relating of sharing authentically. I'm going to share a video later today that Ginny shared me from the retreat. It's the beginning of an exercise um, based on authentic relating, uh, a pairing exercise. So we do some exercises that are verbal, but also authentic movement. You know, be able to move your body authentically. To breathe in a relaxed, natural flow. To be able to rest inside yourself, what we call meditation, is really just to be able to be at peace with yourself. Doing nothing at all. Right? To be at rest, at home, in yourself. In the essence, in the infinite essence of who and what you are, in the infinite essence of who and what life the universe is. In this moment. Right now. And when we rest in this authentic essence, when we're at home in ourselves, when we're relaxed in the ground of being that's present in this moment right now, we are an open gateway. We become plugged in as an open gateway for the magic and miracles to move through us. The magic and miracle that life is. We're present to the presence, if you will. And this is the new paradigm in relating. This is the new paradigm of what we call relationships is going to be based in as we awaken in our consciousness. And it's really beautiful to recognize what's possible. Starting within ourselves attuning to the authentic essence of what wants to move through us so we're like the mind quiets and opens this innocent consciousness and there's a presence and in this presence what is authentic authentic means it's not manufactured it's not manipulated it's not contrived what do people really want you know what do people really long for what are people really desiring what's the most attractive quality what are people yearning for the most authenticity they want to feel somebody that's authentic is genuine as real it's coming from the heart. That's unique because when you're authentic, you're unique. You're a unique flower. You're blooming. There's no one else like you in the world. There's no one else like you anywhere. No one could ever be like you. No matter how hard they try. And you can never be like you no matter how hard you try. So what it means to be yourself, someone says, how do I be myself? How do I be myself? I just want to be myself. How do I be myself? Welcome, Joanna. Who you are. Jane, I'm rocking it every night. And it's just getting better and better. It's just getting better and better and better. This kombucha might be helping slightly. This is amazing stuff. I have no um, affiliation with the company, but it's really good stuff. Um,
you are a mystery even to yourself. You are a mystery even to yourself. It's like you're discovering yourself anew in each moment. You're discovering yourself anew in each moment. You are a mystery even to yourself. You feel what I'm saying? So when people say to me, I want to I want to get to know you more. I want to know I want to know who you are. I want to know all about you. I'm a mystery even to myself. For real. Like that's just that's just the way of it. We all are a mystery even to ourselves. You're a mystery even to yourself. This is why I tell people like if you have no clue who you are, if you feel completely lost in who you are, congratulations. You've discovered the truth. You have no idea who you are? Exactly. You're a mystery even to yourself. You become a mystery even to yourself that you discover anew, moment by moment by moment. Now, with your lover, with your father, with your mother, with your brother, with your sister, with your friends, your soul family, your heart tribe, your community, the people in your life that you see on a regular basis, on the regular. They are a mystery. They become a mystery to you as well that does not need to be resolved. It doesn't need to be solved. To solve the mystery of who someone is is boring, dull, lame, and not true. Dull, lame, boring, and not true. To recognize the mystery in someone, to recognize the the light from a space of innocent consciousness as if you're seeing them for the first time even if you've known them for 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years that's exciting, that's amazing, that's beautiful, that's magical, that's miraculous and that's what I'm interested in those are the kind of relatings, the kind of relationships I'm interested in being in. And really those are the only kind of relationships that are going to hold up in the resonant field if you're coming from that space inside yourself. So as an empowered being, you're, you're, you're resonating, you're attracting back to you that which you are. There's some like 80s song, 90s song. What you see is what you are, and what you are is beautiful now. What you see is what you are, and what you are is beautiful. Not just talking about the physical form, the physical structure, the essence of what we are. The essence of who and what we are. We're pure magic. We're pure magic. We're wild magic. We're crazy wisdom. There's no need to figure it out. There's no need to understand it. Rest in the wildness. Rest in the infinite expanse. In the wide open heart. And the miracle that is you. You feel me? You become a mystery even to yourself. So, 
This is what brings the state of presence into being. How do I become more present is a common question, right? To me, for me. How do I become more present? How do I get more into the now? All these questions are trick questions because there's no how. However, when you recognize yourself as a mystery even to yourself, now you need to pay close attention. Now you need to pay close attention. Do you know why you need to pay close attention? Because you don't know what you're going to say next, what you're going to do next, what you're going to feel next, what you're going to think next. You become a mystery even to yourself. Things are alive now. Things are vibrant. Things are present. Things are interesting. Things are adventurous. Things are exciting. Things are magical. They always were. The problem isn't life. The problem is you. You're the problem. Life is amazing. It's just a matter of recognizing and realizing that you are allowing yourself to let go and embrace the amazement that life is. Become a mystery even to yourself. So it's not about trying to understand, it's not about trying to figure it out with your mind, with thought, with belief systems and thought patterns. It's about presence. It's about being here, bringing awareness here, And in bringing awareness here, the mind quiets and you attune to the universal creative intelligence, also sometimes known as God, Source, Spirit, which is the essence of who and what we truly are. And then we rest in the magic of now and whatever happens is like icing on the cake so to speak. Anybody want to share anything? Comments, questions? Let go and be in the flow or the now. Yes. Thank you all so much for being here. Appreciate so much your presence. Got the links at the bottom. See you in the next now.